five, four, three, two, and one. We get C2 right here. Rotation. Oh, man. What's up, guys? Dr. Webb here. I'm an orthopedic spine surgeon here in San Antonio, Texas. Lately, I've been getting a lot of videos from people asking for my thoughts on this manipulation under anesthesia, specifically by chiropractors. Um, in this video, we're going to go over a couple of different uh, kind of reactions, and I'll give my thoughts. What do I think? I've put out some previous videos about chiropractors and their kind of adjustments and manipulations. And in this video, we're going to do some more of that. So let's jump right in. So this is a chiropractor. I believe he's based out of Los Angeles, California. And when someone sent me this video here, I was just um, kind of blown away by what was going on in this video. We're about to check it out here. So apparently this patient is sedated, which means he's received some medication to make him sleepy and relax and so that he doesn't remember or feel anything. When this happens in the hospital, um, patients are really relaxed. All their muscles, their tendons, their joints, everything is really relaxed. And we actually perform this as orthopedic surgeons, MUAs. We do it uh, for patients who have knee replacements and then they have stiffness after that knee replacement. So we'll take the patient to the operating room and actually bend their knee when they're fully relaxed to get some more range of motion, some flexion, extension of their knee, and hopefully help with range of motion as well as pain if they're having some pain. There are other times when we take the patients to surgery for fractures or dislocations of the uh, cervical spine when the facet joints, which are the, the joints in the, the back of the spine, they become dislocated from a car accident or a fall. Well, we have to uh, put these patients kind of reduce them and these patients have to be relaxed for that. Otherwise, the patient will kind of fight you, they'll tense up and you won't get that joint back in the correct position. Other times when patients have dislocations of their elbow or their shoulder or a, of their hip, and for the most part, we try to reduce these patients, which means we try to get that bone back into a better position in the emergency room or in the trauma bay um, because that's usually where we do most of these. There are certain patients where we just can't get it back in, the patient's fighting you or they're tense enough and they're not letting you uh, reduce their shoulder or their, their hip or their knee and you have to take them to the operating room for a MUA, manipulation under anesthesia. Well. When I saw uh, this video about uh, chiropractors doing this, I was just kind of thrown away because when you're adjusting someone's spine, especially their neck, there's a lot of important structures. The arteries that are there, that there's been case reports of vertebral artery dissections from this adjustment. You can easily dislocate a patient's facet joints, basically dislocate their damn head if you do it forcefully enough. Um, there's also, when we do these procedures um, in orthopedics, we have to explain to the patient the risk. There's risk of me breaking that patient's bone because everything is so relaxed. It Sometimes, you know, you do these elderly patients, you break their bone when you're trying to manipulate uh, their knee or their shoulder. Patients who have frozen shoulder uh, or adhesive capsulitis, um, and then they don't respond to therapy, injections, and then you wait six to nine months and they're still frozen or still kind of um, stuck in place. Well, you have to take those patients sometimes surgery to kind of manipulate their shoulder to get more range of motion. But let's see what this uh, chiropractor here is doing. He kind of noted, kind of in his notes, that this patient received a cervical facet block injection. You can see the, the bandage over the uh, patient's uh, neck here, uh, which means he may have gotten some injections prior to this. These injections are for patients who have a condition called facet arthropathy, which is the bones in the back of the neck, the facet joints. Um, there's one at each level that corresponds to the next level and, and it forms a, a facet joint. 
Well, this can become arthritic, it can become painful, and if you inject the nerves that supply that area, some patients can have uh, relief from this. So, looks like he's already got his injections, and this chiropractor is about to do some adjustments and manipulation while this patient is under anesthesia, which is, I don't know if it's the right thing to do. Five, four, three, two, and when we get C2 right here, rotation. Oh, man. So this is this is actually this is actually pretty dangerous. So there's certain things and certain videos that I had commented on in the past that I was like, uh, no, kind of on the fence. But this is absolutely ludicrous, uh, very unsafe. Um, I actually did some literature research and review. I didn't find any high-level articles that support this. There are some case reports out there. And in orthopedics and medicine in general, we look at the level of evidence, level one evidence, randomized, controlled, double-blinded, uh, controlled trials. And uh, there's actually no evidence that supports this. Um, a patient that is that relaxed and you're adjusting their head that, that quickly and that forcefully, well, that's very dangerous in terms of the structures that are in the neck, fractures, dislocations of the, um, the joints in the neck, the facet joints, our uh, vertebral artery dissection. Uh, this is very dangerous. And I'm just curious which hospitals actually allow chiropractors to do this. And um, crazy. So apparently he interviewed the patient after his adjustment. And um, let's check out and see what the patient had to say. I was, <laughs> I was terrified. Um, just by thinking about getting a shot in your back, it was just, I was terrified. I was very terrified and I'm um, scared and I tried to prolong the procedure just because I was scared, but right. you guys were very on it and everything was like so quick. Yeah, you guys were. Now, you had to let the audience, if you remember, you had on the right side, if you remember, you had numbness and tingling. On my left side. On your left side, yeah. I'm sorry. i you're right. You're right, my left. But you, you had a lot of numbness and tingling. Is a numbness and tingling gone away? Yeah, it's completely gone as far as my my left my left my left side it's nothing like, there no tingling at all do you have any pain or discomfort when you're working and doing your plumbing situation um after the procedure no 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 before no. A procedure yeah but, but after, after the procedure no, no pain nothing. no pain wow. no pain no tension what do you think about the videos i mean you for the first time you got to see it when we posted it. were you like shocked were you like man this is crazy i can't believe that's me I was mind blown, honestly. I was just like, at the same time, moving like, wow, like, <laughs> yeah, it was just a different experience um, in a good way, in a good way. Absolutely. Yeah. I was pretty mind blown too. I've never seen anything like that. I didn't know that chiropractors, you know, did these adjustments while patients were under anesthesia, which is crazy and um, still kind of mind blown by it. So you guys got to see the history you got to see him describe his feelings, what was going on. We got the OR. You got to see and experience it. I'm not making it up. I do a full visit, a physical examination. I call it out before it even comes out. I don't need the MRI or the X-ray to get the diagnosis. The MRI is confirming what I already told the patient. In that part, I do gr agree with the gentleman here. When patients come in to see a physician or a doctor, well, when we take a history, we do a physical exam, we have a diagnosis, something that uh, we may think is going on, uh, maybe going on with the patient, like cervical radiculopathy, which is a shooting pain down the arm. If it goes into the thumb, that's usually C6. If it goes into the index finger or the, the long finger, that's C7. So we have a general idea of what portion of the spine may be affected. We don't know to kind of what severity, um, if the patient has, has weakness and also some radicular symptoms in their arm, it's possible that they have very severe stenosis or tightening of that nerve or spinal cord at that location. And then we use the imaging studies to confirm our suspicion or our presumptive diagnosis. So I kind of agree with him kind of in that regard. But in terms of these adjustments, these uh, forceful manipulations under anesthesia, they're not, they're not safe. 
We're gonna jump over to another video. Uh, this is another manipulation under anesthesia. Looks like this patient had like a full body adjustment. Like, um, I just don't think that this is needed um, when a patient's under medications and um, anesthetics. This is, this is pretty crazy. Keep the video pretty, anyways. <laughs> so she's wearing these goggles, these blue goggles on her face. Um, in surgery, we place these on patients over their eyes to offer some protection, especially when patients are waking up and they tend to like scratch their face or scratch, uh, try to grab things. Well, they can inadvertently kind of, you know, hit their eye and damage their eye. So that, that's. Uh, what those goggles are for, especially for other things that are in the operating room. Um, when the patient's being moved, something's not stuck in the patient's eyes. She also has what's called a nasal cannula, uh, which is a, a breathing apparatus uh, that delivers oxygen to the patient while they're asleep. So this patient is sedated. Uh, she was given some medication and she won't remember or feel anything from this because of that medication. I'm not sure if both of these guys are chiropractors or one's like a surgical assist or some type of assist, but I'm not sure why it requires two people to do this. There's certain positions of your neck that should not be made or um, your neck should not be twisted in a certain way or forcefully adjusted while you sleep. That's just not safe uh, for any structures, any large herniations, or if you have a very tight spinal canal or spinal stenosis, well, you can actually paralyze a patient if you push a piece of that disc into the spinal cord. It's this is something that you should not be doing under anesthesia. And this is pretty dangerous also. When you are pulling on a patient's arm like this, you can fracture their arm, you can dislocate their shoulder, um, and cause a lot of other injuries because the patient's so relaxed. Usually when a patient is awake, they can let you know like, hey, this is hurting, This you're, you're pulling too hard. Well, when a patient's under anesthesia, um, they can't tell you that. So you, it's this is very dangerous here.
And whenever we are manipulating a patient's knee, like after a knee replacement that is very stiff or trying to reduce a patient's elbow or shoulder or their hip, um, it's, it's a slow and it's a uh, gentle kind of tug. You don't want to forcefully pull someone or forcefully elevate their shoulder, abduct their shoulder. You can fracture it. Uh, you can cause injury. And doing these adjustments while the patient's asleep, you have to be very careful. This medication that you see here in the syringe, that white kind of liquid, it's called propofol. This is an induction agent. This, this is something that is used in patients in surgery to keep them asleep and also keep them relaxed. Um, this is also the medication that Michael Jackson, who was taking when he passed away. So it's, that's why they call it the Michael Jackson medication or drug, propofol. Uh, patients uh, are really relaxed and they're asleep and they can't feel anything and they won't remember anything from that procedure. I am not sure what's going on here. One gentleman is straddling her leg and the other gentleman is kind of uh, maybe trying to stretch out her hamstrings. So I'm not sure. What's going on here? So these MUAs, manipulation under anesthesia, that are done by chiropractors, I just don't think that they're safe. There's no evidence that supports their, its use. And after a very thorough literature review, um, most of the reports out there are some, a few case reports. This is actually from the Blue Cross Blue Shield of Tennessee, their medical policy, they kind of suggested, and this was just reviewed on May 13, 2021, that manipulation under anesthesia involving multiple joints and serial treatment sessions, greater than one, is considered investigational. But you have chiropractors that are out there that are doing these manipulations under anesthesia when there's no evidence to support its use and also, it's very unsafe. These are my thoughts. This is Dr. Webb. Thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you next time.